I want to thank the uh, Focus Ultrasound Foundation for the opportunity to present this work. Uh, part of this work started uh, during my fellowship uh, in Toronto with uh, Dr. Lozano. Our main interest was trying to identify, based on tractography, where do we sonicate for focused ultrasound telemotomies. So um, by conflict of interest, I have a research equipment grant from Medtronic and a research uh, grant for clinical trials uh, from Insight Tech. Uh, so currently, ventral intermediate nucleus is not visible on conventional MRI imaging, both 1.5 Tesla and 3 Tesla. Uh, we use uh, formulaic methods, uh, where in ACPC plane, you identify how many percentage points of the ACPC length you choose anterior coordinate, and laterally you go based on either midline measurements or from the ventricle wall. Uh, and then during focused ultrasound procedure, you can do uh, adjustments based on the feedback uh, of side effects as well as uh, efficacy. You heard about that in a previous talk. There are some special sequences in MRI that can be done to try to uh, visualize VIM. Uh, a lot of these are uh, still under investigation and not uh, in clinical practice. And then there is a whole uh, sort of way of looking at uh, VIM using different atlases where patient outcomes and location of the leads, uh, especially in the DBS world, uh, from the CRAVE uh, atlas-based uh, localization is out there as well. Uh, our rationale of using uh, tractography-based based targeting uh, was uh, due to the fact that uh, dented to rubrothalamic tract, or the cerebellar input to the thalamus, uh, and then thalamocortical connectivity is a imaging biomarker for good clinical outcomes. And this has been shown both in the DBS field as well as uh, from some of the work by Dr. Elias uh, in focused ultrasound, looking at the changes within this network over time. Uh, then the other important motivation uh, for this work was to avoid side effects from off-target sonication. You heard about uh, sensory deficits and uh, sometimes even uh, having uh, problems with uh, sonication of the pyramidal tract. Uh, so some of the steps to obtain uh, uh, high uh, anatomical accuracy of the diffusion-weighted imaging, we uh, try to minimize uh, motion artifact by patting the head well and making sure that the patients uh, with head tremor did not have head movement during MR acquisition. Uh, we maintain the voxel size to a two millimeter isovoxel, uh, use diffusion directions at least 60, uh, and then we manually checked uh, the co-registration between anatomical T1s and the B0 uh, diffusion-weighted imaging. Uh, for this, uh, project, we used the uh, uh, Stealth Wits Medtronic uh, 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 software platform uh, because of its integration with the surgical uh, targeting uh, software plus uh, having a all the low sensitivity but a high specificity that is good for surgical targeting, uh, especially since you're looking for low false positive rates. And so just to uh, recap the anatomy in this region, the green uh, box is ventral intermediate nucleus, right lateral to that is the pyramidal tract, and posterior to that is the sensory thalamus. Uh, we tried to recreate that type of anatomy by tracking the pyramidal tract and lemniscus uh, in the beginning, and then based on a safe distance that we identified about three millimeters from their borders, identified the ventral intermediate nucleus uh, region of interest. Uh, and the hypothesis was if this ROI is correctly placed and truly represents the, uh, the VIM in a patient, it should have structural connectivity to the motor cortex, as you can see in the top uh, row, and also uh, to the dentate nucleus. Due to the streamlined algorithm that we used uh, for uh, the uh, fiber tracking, we saw as an artifact that most of the fibers were coming ipsilateral, even though we know from tracing studies that most of these fibers are contralateral uh, dentate in origin. And so using uh, this methodology, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, we uh, treated eight patients, um, and out of those eight patients, seven, we were successfully able to target the VIM uh, with this method. Uh, we had intraoperative clinical efficacy, uh, and the metric that we used for intraoperative efficacy was with a 10-second sonication, therapeutic temperature of 55 or more, you could have objective 50% tremor reduction. Uh, we noticed no side effect related to sonication of pyramidal tract or lemniscus and the sensory nucleus. Uh, our surgical times, uh, the sonication time was 78 minutes, so about a little, little more than uh, an hour. 
number of sonications about 13. Uh, we only had to optimize the target uh, because of uh, controlling medial uh, or lateral part for the proximal or distal hand tremor, not because of any uh, side effect profiles. So these are the eight patients. You can see uh, uh, with their uh, demographics, the first column is distance of the tractography identified uh, VIM and the actual uh, lesion. Next one is standard targeting and the actual lesion, and then changes in pre and post operative CRST. As you can see that the tractography identified VIM was tightly correlated uh, with the final lesion epicenter, so we were successfully able to sonicate the, the TVIM. Uh, distance between standard targeting and and the uh, tractography identified VIM is significant, and the reduction in CRST was uh, more than 50%. So conclusions, uh, tractography-based prospective targeting uh, for ultrasound telemotomy is safe, it's feasible. We were able to have approximately 50% reduction in CRST at one month. We did not have uh, side effects related to sonication of off-target uh, uh, pyramidal tract and lemniscus. Uh, the major unknown is long-term uh, outcomes uh, and side effect profiles. Thank you very much. Time for maybe one question. Very nice work. Uh, quick question. The, in what general direction would you say was the difference between the measured targeting method versus your tractography-based approach? I know you gave an epicenter to epicenter distance, but was it typically superior, inferior, right, left? Did you notice a trend towards the location difference? Yeah, so this is an excellent question. It, it was uh, generally more anterior, uh, somewhere between millimeter to millimeter and a half more anterior than the standard coordinates. We, we use tractography also, so I think we started about halfway through approximately 30 patients that we've done, and then there was a learning curve, you know, a period of skepticism. But, but I think we've convinced ourselves it's, 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 it's reliable. We still compromise between ACPC and, and the tractography, but I, I think it's valuable. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, very helpful, and I've done both ways, uh, as, as you mentioned, Dr. Eisenberg, and uh, the tractography way is uh, uh, you have more confidence in, in sonication and, and uh, at least intraoperative uh, tremor testing good results, and uh, hopefully we haven't had any side effects, so hopefully continue this trend forward.